my name is Rick Pasek, the fly fish fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Today we'll be tying a little river nymph. It's kind of a, a, a soft hackle hairs here, if you want to call it that. Um, it's a fairly simple pattern to tie. Um, that's roughly, I'll change camera so you guys can see, that's roughly what we're going to be tying. Okay, a little bit of sparkle in it, but mostly it's going to be fairly natural. Okay, tungsten bead on the front. Um, we're going to be using some Zemperfly Nano Silk in olive and 12 watt. Going to be using some Hens CDC, so just one little CDC feather. Um, we are going to be using some Hairs Ear Plus dubbing from my Airline. Um, it's got this stuff is really nice. It's got some guard hairs. It's got some of the the the, uh, the underbody, and it's even got a little tiny tiny bit of, of flash in it, right? So and a little bit of flashy stuff. So it just helps. Then uh, for the shell back portion, we're going to be using one piece of lateral scale, and then and I forgot to take it out, but it's simple enough to grab. I'm going to use a little bit of olive um, wire. Okay, for the rib, and then for the soft hackle, I'm going to be using some hen saddle in a speckled brown. Okay, that's that's the uh, pattern that we're going to tie. So, first things first. Oh, and and we're going to be using some uh, lead tape. So this is basically this comes in a sheet like this. Okay, and it's it's got glue on the back of it. You just peel this this white paper off. So. I cut it already to my width and there's the glue. I just want to add a little bit of extra weight to this. So put my bead up there, get in right behind that bead. Sometimes it's a little bit of a bugger to start. You know what? I'm going to start from the back end because it's just easier. I can always rip it off. So I'm just going to wrap it all the way up to behind my bead. It's just adding a little bit of extra weight. And then I'm going to come back. A little bit to about there just rip that off rip off the back end if I can it's always better if you've got nails and I'll smoothen that out just a second so I get that off my finger so that just adds a little bit of extra weight to it right just want to get that uh, I want to get this down and I want to get it down quick right I mean this is for you can use these in lakes as well, but I find uh, this is a, an excellent uh, river pattern. Um, it's this is a uh, sorry, this is a uh, BL uh, three fifty four in a size eight. You can tie this in a size six, I uh, size eight, ten, twelve. So I'm just doing it in a. Again, I like tying them for you guys. I like tying them larger so you guys can see it better. It just makes it a little easier for you guys to see when I've got a, a larger fly. And device, right? So I'm just gonna try to adjust that light a little bit for you guys. See if that's if I can get that a little bit better. I think that might be a bit better. We'll see. It's not as nice for me, but that doesn't matter. So take a piece of squirrel tail, okay? And I'm just gonna take a little little piece from the bottom here. I mean, you can take it from anywhere, but. Take it from right about there. I'm gonna take about 15, 10, 15 little hairs. Cut that off the skin. So there, and I'm just gonna grab it all by the tips here. Pull out any of the, not so much the under fur because there really isn't any, but the um, short tips. I'm gonna throw it into my hair stacker because I do want the tips to to be lined up as best as possible at least. So there, my hair stacker. Pull it out. Again, so now I've got my tips lined up. I want it about half to three quarters the length of the body. Of the body, not of the whole fly, but of the body. The body's gonna end right about there. So about that long. So there's roughly where I'm gonna tie it in is there so I'm just going to cut that away at the front here try to do this so you guys can see what I'm doing 
Okay, so now I'm just going to come back to just catch that in. I just got one fiber there. Sorry, guys. One fiber that got in the way there. So I'm just going to lay that on top. Sometimes working with these uh, when there's lead in the underbody lead, it actually sometimes helps if you if you uh, completely cover up that lead with your uh, thread beforehand. So now I do want this tail to be coming going down a little bit around the corner. So I'm, I still I'm going to put a wrap behind it though. I always want to put a wrap behind my tails. Okay. Sure, that's all really nicely tied down, and that's the absolute beauty between uh, of this uh, nano silk is you can just crank on her. So done. Now I made a mess on my tying bench with cutting that, <laughs> but that's okay. So next is where the heck did I put it? Uh, right there, the wire. So I'm gonna put a little bit of little piece of wire on this is just um, it, it, you can use you don't have to even do this there's two reasons to do it, it gives a little bit of segmentation to it but more than anything it is uh, it's gonna hold that shell back that lateral scale right so it's gonna give that lateral scale a bit of a segmentation but it's also gonna help hold it on so take my shell back back up to the front always want to start Go back to that same tie-in point right and I do want a little bit fatter up here at the front that like this section this section here I want a little bit fatter than the back right so I do want it to thin out now I want to keep this right on top because this is going to be used as a shell back so I'll just keep lifting it to make sure that I'm staying on top and that I don't go any further than the tail tie-in point I'm going to try to see if I can get that a little bit better lighting for you guys. That might be a bit better there. Okay, <clears throat> so that's done. Now I'm going to take my tying wax. Give a little bit of a wax there. Get my, my dubbing and just put a fairly thin noodle on here. This stuff dubs so nicely too. turn in it's this difficult to do with the damn camera so close <laughs> I'm gonna turn no I didn't want, don't like that I'm gonna pull that back I'm gonna do a little bit at a time because that camera I've got that camera like an inch and a half away from the fly so it's kind of hard to to wrap so I'll do a little bit less at a time so it's a little easier get a nice Dub on there, a little bit more. I want a, f a fairly loose dub. I know it looks a little fat and stuff right at the moment, but I do want a fairly loose dub. Because I want to be able to pull a bit of this material out in a bit here. I want I want it to create kind of a really buggy leggy look to it, right? So a little bit more. Uh, maybe one little tiny bit more right that there. Because I want to leave room for my hackle and stuff, right? So yeah, there we go. That's good. Okay. So now I'm gonna take my lateral scale. And you don't have to use lateral scale. You can use anything, shell back, any, any kind of material that you like that'll give a, a nice, first of all, it'll create a nice shell back. Second of all, it'll give that flash, right? 
that's I like this having this flash on there. Um, it just is another attractant, right? I'm just giving this a nice tight pull while I'm holding the shell back on top, the lateral scale. Giving it a nice pull so it stays right on top there. That's good. Give it a couple of turns in front before I cut it off. Nip that off. <clears throat> Take my wire, counter wrap my dubbing the way I did my dubbing, trying to make sure that you keep that lateral scale on top. And I'm going fairly tight when I'm around the bottom. I'm pulling it up tight because I, again, I want to, I want to create that segmentation, but I also want to uh, kind of, not I want to tighten up that body a bit, but not much. Only where I. Did the segmentation so helicopter off now if it's not sitting perfect just give it a bit of a twist you can you can still do that so there let's get that a little bit of a little bit now you can use a wider lateral scale if you want to have a have a wider thing there but so now i'm just going to take just brush out a little bit not a lot i just want to brush out a little bit there that's it can cut off some of these errant fibers at the front. Now I'm going to take my CDC and I'm going to tie this in by the butt. A couple of times behind, a couple of times in front. Cut off my stem. Now CDC is extremely brittle, like it's soft, soft. So you got to be really careful when you're doing this portion here. So even when I was uh, when I was test tying, I always tie one ahead of time just to make sure. I'm, oh, there, I did exactly the same thing. I came around the last time, it uh, it broke on me. So there, I want three or four turns of that at the most. Just want a little bit of that CDC in there, that, that CDC look. It flows so nice and it traps those air bubbles in it, right? So it gives it a little bit more of a sparkly look without adding sparkle, right? So, so just make sure that's nicely in there. Maybe give it another four or five turns in there. Now I'm going to take my feather, my hen feather, and tie it in again by the butt. Three, fold your stem back, two, three, take your stem, cut it off. Same, same thing here. Spread this apart, get your hackle pliers in there. that stuff back now if you want a thinner portion up here you can strip one side off right so you don't need to uh, to use it all so there you go tie that off tie that off front behind in front take my hackle pliers off holding my my um, thread and pull that waste piece off Lay this all back. Oh, see? And that happens. It happens to everyone. This, um, this uh, uh, hen cape that I got, I personally am not a fan of it. I, uh, I will be buying a better quality one soon. Um, but... I saw it in the store, a local store here, and I figured, oh, I'll give this one a shot and see what it's like. Um, I'm not a big fan. It uh, it breaks on me quite often, just like that. Um, even when I got the stem tied in, it'll it'll break quite quite easily. So, um, so I give that a cut. Uh, give that a couple of turns. Cut that off. Then I'm going to take some uh, Zebrafly waxed, classic waxed, and they call it fluorescent red. Uh, and I'm just going to give it four, five, six turns right up here. That's it. 
just want to create that little tiny bit of a hot spot just a little bit wow i almost sounded like bob ross there so Cut that off. I pulled that too tight, but that's okay. I only pulled one half hitch out. And then I'm going to take my head she meant. I just put one drop and let that go all the way around. It's a little bit too much there because there is a little bit too much. I can always just dab it off with my finger and then wipe that off with my little rag I've got here. Okay, then I'm going to take my brush, just brush this out just a little bit, make sure those are separated a bit. So um, I could have made this body, now that I'm looking at it, I could have made this body a little thinner, um, but it will be fine. Um, it's actually good to have some fatter bodies, some thinner bodies. Um, yeah, so that is the, uh, that's the completed fly. Um, like I said, I would, uh, make sure you've got good quality feathers for these types of, uh, flies because of exactly what happened to me there. Um, it does snap on me. Um, I'm actually looking into a couple of, a couple of new companies that, uh, to, to get my, to get my, uh, hackle materials off of um, one out of uh, Pennsylvania and one out of the UK so um, this stuff here like I said I'm not a big fan of it um, some people have have had really good success with it I'm not a big fan of it so um, and it's it's uh, it, it's inexpensive so I mean you can't complain this 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 whole thing is was $14 right for this so I mean it's not expensive but uh, so that's that's the fly like i said uh, it's it's um i tie some thinner some thicker um i tie some with tungsten beads some without tungsten beads some with hot spots some without hot spots i just have a little bit of everything in there right and you definitely want to have that cdc in there that cdc really helps it, it really really helps with that that little bit of movement first of all that it that it'll it'll uh pick up in the water and it it does such a good job of 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 trapping that those air bubbles and trapping that that and and, and attracting that light it, it it almost acts like a sparkle it's 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 an amazing product um so yeah so give that one a go and uh if you like that video give her a thumbs up and think of subscribing if you haven't if you have thank you very much and uh, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any uh, future videos gonna be trying to do two to three a week at least um at least for the time being we'll see um, it's, uh, it's a lot of work, but that's okay. So, uh, let me know what you guys want to see. Um, what kind of flies you want to see? Dry flies, wet flies, river, lake, ocean, steelhead, salmon. Um, yeah, just let me know what you want to see. Maybe if there's a certain pattern you'd like to see tied. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll go from there. Tight lines. We'll see you in the next video.